Welcome to another Photoshop editing video. This time we will be creating a very dark and grim landscape photo out of a rather flat and bright drone image. Most of the editing will be happening in the camera raw editor while I will be finishing this shot in Photoshop. And if you want to follow along, you can find the raw file in the description of the video. So without much more talking, let's go. Okay, here we are in the camera raw editor. You can see the base image is super bright and not very grim. We want to change that. First off, let me switch the profile to Adobe Standard just to get a more flat image and thus I have more control over the contrast myself. Now in the basic tab, I do want to adjust the white balance. I do want to give this whole image a colder look, so I'm going to drop the temperature just a little bit. Maybe like this. Then next up, we can simply drop the exposure and already make this image a lot darker. I'm going to drop it quite a bit. It's important for me to have all the details in the sky. So that's a good spot right here. Then next up, I do want to drop the highlights as well. This helps making the shot even darker. And also it will help to preserve details in the sky. Then I do want to increase the whites just for some contrast. Maybe like this. Now at that point, the sky does get a little too bright, but don't worry about that. We will fix it later. Then let's drop the shadows for even more contrast. And just to be safe, I'm going to increase the blacks because I don't want to have too much underexposure in this shot. Okay, that looks good. Then let's make this image a little clearer by increasing the texture. And let's bring up the clarity. And let's add dehaze as well, which will add some more contrast. Perfect. Now for the dark version of this shot, I do want to have less colors than usual. So I'm going to drop the vibrance. And I'm also dropping the saturation. I do want this image to look almost black and white. So that's a good spot right there. All right, then next up, before I go on with the local adjustments, I think I need to crop the image. The very near foreground isn't that interesting and it kind of makes the framing of the whole scene a little awkward. So I want to crop it away and kind of get like a panoramic image like that. I think this looks much better. I might add a little more sky later in Photoshop so that mountain on the left side has a little room to breathe up there. But for now, let's check out the local adjustments. First off, let's work on the sky. Therefore, I'm creating a simple sky mask. Not a perfect selection, but we can work with that. However, I do want to subtract a linear gradient here. Just like that. And with that sky selection, I'm going to bring up the contrast. I'm also dropping the shadows. And let's drop the blacks as well. So those adjustments will just make the sky a little darker and we get some more structure in the clouds. Next up, I'm going to use another linear gradient for the sky. So just up there on the right side. I'm going to target that upper cloud there. And with this linear gradient, I'm again dropping the exposure just to add some very grim looking clouds up there. That looks pretty good. Now at that point, I do want to add a little bit of glow as well. So I'm using a radial gradient and I'm creating it over the bright spot in the, in the sky, just like this. And here, let's bring up the blacks slightly. Just like that. Perfect. Now let's focus on the foreground. Again, I'm using another linear gradient and just kind of cover the whole foreground like that. Again, I want to make it darker by bringing down the exposure. However, I'm very, very careful to not unexpose anything, but that's looking good. Then I also want to bring up the whites to restore some of those brighter areas. And finally, we can work with a bit of clarity just to give the foreground some more structure. Perfect. 
And then there is one last mask I want to apply, and that is to make those, uh, to make the snowy areas on the mountains a little brighter. Therefore, let's create a color range mask. And I'm just clicking in this area, which I want to brighten up. Of course, now we have the sky selected as well. So let's just say subtract and say select the sky. I guess we need to use the brush to further subtract a few areas right here. Just roughly painting along those edges of the mountains and the foreground. I could even refine the color range mask to further target the snowy areas, just like that. Okay, and in here I'm simply going to boost the whites, like that. And due to this change, we do have a slight blue color cast in the snow, which I don't want for this image. So I'm going down to the saturation slider and just bring it down. All right, that looks really cool already. And that's it for the local adjustments. Then let's continue doing a little bit of color grading, but that only means I'm going into the color grading tab. And here I just want to change the midtones. For that, I'm going to apply a blue hue, maybe like that, and just very little saturation. All right, that looks great. Finally, let's set into the effects tab and also apply some vignetting, just like that. Perfect. Uh, of course, we can also sharpen this image and as always, I'm going to drop the radius, increase the detail, apply some masking. So only the important areas are, sh are getting sharpened, just like that. Now add some sharpening. Done. And that's it for the raw adjustments. Now let's open it up in Photoshop to finish this image. First off, there are a few things I want to remove. So I'm using the spot healing brush and I just want to clean up the foreground a little bit. Okay, that's looking much better. Now, as I said, I want to add a little more sky to the top of the image. Therefore, I'm using the move tool first. So I'm pressing V and I just drag it down slightly, just like that. Then I'm pressing M to pick up the selection tool and just create a rough selection right here. Hit Shift F5, select Content Aware and hit OK. The content of Werfel did a pretty good job right here. I still think I might need to move the image around a little bit because I don't want to lose too much of the road down there. But I think it's looking pretty good this way. So at this point, I'm pretty much done with the post processing, but I think I do want to check out the Nick Collection plugin just to be safe. In here, I do want to give the Pro Contrast filter a try. Just adding some more contrast, as well as some dynamic contrast, maybe. Actually, no, let's not use dynamic contrast. All right, I think that's looking better. So let's just go with this. And before I start to overdo it, I'm going to stop at this point. So here we have the finished image. I hope this video was helpful and interesting. Of course, if you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you very much for watching this video.